Hello and Assalamu alaikum. I am Parvez Khan. I am an assistant professor in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication in Kohat University of Science and Technology. The subject is Media Law, Ethics and Literacy. The course code is JMC351. It's our lecture number eight. And the part of the topic, which is journalism ethics, today we are going to discuss pressures on a journalist. Uh, first, we are going to talk about uh, the outcomes of this class. What will the students gain after attending this uh, session? Uh, some of the outcomes that we are going to talk about is that uh, students will be able to identify different pressures on a journalist and along with that they'll be able to understand pressure and the impact uh, of the ethical decisions they make and the quality ch journalism and the challenges uh, that are faced by journalists. So these are some of uh, the points and along with that the most important point is to be safe and protect oneself as a journalist because this is what we want when our students go out how they can protect themselves so these are some of the outcomes because after attending this session uh, we'll be able to see how we can protect ourselves how we can understand different kinds of pressure and what are the challenges to quality journalism so this is basically the outcome that we're looking forward to after this session so basically why are we discussing this the the topic the pressures on the journalist it's important because uh, it establishes the link between ethics and pressure because both are interrelated. You cannot separate ethics from the pressure or pressure from the ethics because they are interrelated. The more we talk about it, we'll understand and how it affects our decisions because some of the pressures, they really affect our decisions. So this is why we are discussing it to understand the dynamics of journalism because the decisions we make have an impact. Similarly, how it affects the quality of journalism. This is an important point because the good journalism also depends on our ethical decisions. So this is why we are going to discuss this in quite detail and see what are the different aspects and elements that really affect our judgments as a journalist, that really have pressures, how these pressure affect us as a person, as a journalist. So this is what we are going to look forward into this lecture. So what are the different kinds of pressures on a journalist? It's important to understand, as you can see from the picture, uh, the, the, there are different groups that you work for different organizations you work for different you have different employers so the first one i'm going to go into is that uh, what is an employee's pressure who is an employer basically we all know that employer is basically the one who employs you who gives you a salary who hires you you work for the organization and it creates a kind of pressure because they are the ones who are paying you and uh, they will expect you how you're going to work so definitely there is an employer's pressure there's an element to it that you have to look forward to because sometimes uh, it is there that it kind of creates pressure because uh, the owners or the employers they also have a kind of tilt they also have kind of agendas they also have kind of different backgrounds that can force you to do their kind of work obviously if they're paying you they're expecting you to do work now this is where the professional organizations don't often do that but sometimes it can happen so if if the organization is not that professional enough so employer can dictate terms or agendas or what is liking and dislikings are so this is the key point that can put a lot of pressure on journalists because it may not be in line with what he thinks or what he thinks is good journalism and similarly when we work for state-run media or commercial media they're completely different entities completely different in structures while you're working for government, your focus is more on the government positive stories and things like that. Whereas private media is more critical. And this can also have an impact because the organizations also depend on advertisers. So if you are dependent on advertising, the owners or the employees can ask you to cover a particular story in a particular way. That creates a lot of pressure on journalists as well. So there is a big pressure on, on them because employees can have a political tilt or they can have an ideology that can have serious impact on how journalists think, how they make their ethical decisions. So these are all the key points like if they're paying you, if it can lead to ethical issues because uh, sometimes they would want you to cover story in a particular way or particular angle or particular mind frame. So that can cause a lot of problems and similarly, uh, it depends where you're working. If you're working for state media, obviously you cannot cover stories that can be critical enough. Similarly, if you're working for commercial media, so you're dependent on advertisements. So these are the kinds of pressure when you're working for an organization and you have to see because you're getting salary. So if they're paying you, they can obviously dictate terms. So that is a kind of pressure that usually, uh, and, and right now the situation in media is much more the same. Many journalists have been fired 
and uh, th these kinds of problem exist and it creates a lot of pressure because if you know you're going to be fired the next day it affects your journalism in a very very different way so the next one is as you can see the picture you can see the cordon of area so what is what does this picture reflect it basically reflects the authority that something's happened and the area has been cordoned off so yes the next pressure that we are going to talk about is authority obviously what is an authority authority is anyone who can exercise power who can stop you from doing your work it can be a government organization it can be uh, law enforcement or, <laughs> or institutions or it can be police customs or any branch of authority that can exercise power so that affects your your movement that can affect everything that you're doing because they can exercise different powers they can stop you from doing your work they can regulate your work through licensing even if the chat they, they create a lot of pressures on the organization news organization they can cancel the licenses so power is there in different forms and they can also limit your access to a particular area place or event like if you're a journalist and if you want to go to a no-go area if you want to do coverage in Waziristan or somewhere else it's not possible for you to go b without taking permission so sometimes you need to have access to authority in order to make it easier for you smoother for you because as long as you you are there there will be different kinds of authorities in different places so it's better to be safe uh, so these are the kinds of pressure because sometimes you want to cover a story and you're not allowed access so your story is killed sometimes you want to go to cover a war zone area so you have to go on with the with the uh, with the uh, army or with the law enforcement agencies so it, that's called embedded journalism and that's where you cannot exercise your freedom because you have to be dependent on where they take you so yes authority in a, in a way affects your journalism there is that's a pressure how you deal with it that's that's what we're going to talk about in the next lecture but yes authority causes a lot of pressure on journalists and uh, this takes us to our next uh, topic which is uh, uh, obviously next uh, 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 next pressure that is that's threats what are what are threats obviously we can see that journalism is all about uh, going through different kinds of pressures and one of them is threats because when you're working obviously uh, journalists face threats from different parties groups individuals they're covering stories it can come from any side when when you are trying to uphold truth when you're trying to report facts obviously it can upset some people some groups or some individuals and that is why you get all kinds of threats and uh, that's why journalism is considered one of the dangerous professions around the world and we can see that journalists lives are always at stake because they're getting threats from different groups and circles and we can see that uh, even the story or the words or the language can also lead to threats so this means that uh, whatever journalists write has an impact and it can cause a lot of problems it can cause uh, difficulties it can also resolve problems so yes and leading to that now we're going to as you can see in the picture what's in the picture you can see cultural colors and so now even this can be a pressure on a journal how well, well that's pretty interesting because if you look at this cultures and traditions can also be a kind of pressure on a journalist because journalists cannot exist out of society journalists are part of the society they have been reproduced by the society so you're not outside you're not outside it because you're not an alien or someone that who can came just without any previous knowledge you have grown up so that are that is a kind of pressure a journalist cannot go he cannot free himself out of this the decisions he make will have an impact of the culture and tradition that he holds uh, in his schemata similarly culture codes are deeply embedded in individuals an individual cannot deny that uh, suddenly he can forget who he was who, where he grew up or what religion or what customs he had that creates pressure because for example if you're grown in a very different environment and you go to another city where the environment is different so your cultural codes can be a hindrance in your coverage it can cause problems sometimes it can be easier as well because some people are good at adaptability but that can be problematic and similarly any traditionally held belief can affect journalists and it might affect a journalist story because as i said earlier sometimes we think that uh, it's okay to cover a story from different place but when you go out there your previous schemata your previous knowledge your previous exposure that can overcome you and that can lead towards biased journalism 
So it's not wrong or right. And the, the thing that we're talking about is that culture and tradition will have a strong impact on your personality and it influences your journalism as well. It's, it's easy. People say that, oh, we must be impartial. We must look forward to balanced stories. But that doesn't happen because there are so many overdetermining factors. There are so many things that that makes a journalist and it's not easy. There are multiple pressures. And even I would say that we cannot categorize uh, this thing into uh, in a simple way that yes these are the only kinds of pressures no there are multiple pressures but these are some of the well-known pressures that a journalist face and especially the young ones when they go into the industry so that's why we are discussing it in detail with you and discuss we want that the more you know about it so that you can you can carry yourself well you can you can understand the problems and come up with some better solutions and which can contribute to quality journalism and uh, Besides uh, culture and tradition, uh, there is personal conviction, which is related to that. The thoughts that you've had all your life, the readings that you have done, the, 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 uh, the exposure you've had. So obviously it can cause pressure and sometimes personal opinion and fact can get intermixed and it can cause a lot of pressure on a journalist to do quality journalism. For example, if a reporter is against capital punishment, but what he can do uh, if the society thinks otherwise. Similarly, gift, perks and privileges are another kinds of pressure and most of journalists see that but they don't understand it because uh, if they sometimes think they're being respected or they're being lured into some charming incentives but obviously if someone is inviting you for an event, if they're giving you some kind of incentives, there are some hidden motives. And that can be problematic because professional country, uh, companies try to buy journalists friendship and we can see that uh, that kinds of create pressure because sometimes you cannot write against them if you have taken some benefits from them. That's a big pressure. So yes, and along with that, uh, another picture you can see the technology. Yes, the technology aspect is very, very interesting because speed and technology is also causing a lot of pressure on journalists. It was pretty easy, but now it's changing. You have you you are there. You're connected all the time. You have internet all the time. You can go viral anytime. So when you're connected to the internet, the speedy journalism can be problematic. You can cause errors. Things can go viral. There can memes all over, and it's it's kind of adding to the pressure because previously we had gatekeepers who would look into your content, who would edit your content. But now we can see that it's speedy. Whatever you say on the internet has tendency to go viral and it can cause a lot of problems. It is an advantage as well because you can do immediately, you can cover immediately, you can highlight whatever you want to, but it's also a kind of pressure because once things go wrong, uh, things can go really viral. You know, it can be very dangerous on the social media. Now I would uh, recommend some of the books. Uh, these are Press in Chains by Zamir Niazi. Uh, very, very uh, well-known book in Pakistan. And then we have the Routledge Handbook of Mass Media Ethics. It's a very good one by uh, Lee Wilk Wilkers and Wilkins. And um, uh, uh, we have another one is Media Law and Ethics, uh, which is the third edition. So these are the good books. Uh, I'll also write uh, proper details about it uh, to my students in the email. So you can contact me if you want these books. I can uh, give further references. So these are the kind of books that are very important to understand this issue in detail as well and uh, some of the references. So before I conclude my session, uh, I think it's pretty much uh, important that uh, we once again resummarize some of the topics. So yes, journalists are not outside the society. There are multiple pressures on him from society, from culture, from structural and it can be structural, it can be economic, it can be even psychological. So what we have discussed so far is that there are structural barriers, like even authority can stop you from uh, going somewhere. But even psychologically, like you have personal convictions, you have customs and traditions that can cause a lot of pressure on you as a journalist. So there are multiple overdetermining factors that define you as a journalist and it creates pressure. For example, employers create a lot of pressure because they're paying you. You don't know what their angles are. Even in Pakistan, you don't know the channel you're working for. What is their political tilt? Which political party they're supporting? So similarly, uh, after an employer, there are authorities that keep coming, that keep checking. Uh, they can limit your access. They can stop you from going anywhere. So that creates a kind of pressure. Uh, similarly, then there's culture, 
traditions, uh, they are a big pressure on you and there's personal convictions there. Speedy journalism is another big problem for journalists because they have to keep up with pace and now the journalism is changing. A journalist should now edit his own story, he should be able to write, he should make a story from his mobile and just upload it immediately. Things are started to change because previously when you used to go out in the field, you used to have a cameraman, you used to have an editor, you used to have a bureau chief. But now things are changing. There's much more freelance journalism. There's much more online journalism. So things have changed over the years. So I would say that there are multiple factors. If you know, you're aware, uh, I think it can give an edge to students because if they go out there, they'll be confronted with lots of pressure. It creates lots of anxiety. It creates lots of problems for students. But at the same way, if you're aware of these problems, you can get around with it. You can improve your journalism. You can contribute to quality journalism. So the purpose is, that we want to produce quality journalism in the coming days and quality students and quality journalists who can go out there and, and make their mark and contribute towards society. So this is what we are looking forward to. And I hope you really enjoyed the session. Uh, the, we have more to talk about. Maybe in the next session, we talk about how to get around with these pressures, how we can deal with uh, these pressures and how can we contribute to quality journalism. Obviously, the pressures cannot be eliminated. There will always be pressures and journalists will always be there so the best way is to come around it to see how we can deal with it and let's see in the coming class we'll be talking about how we can somehow minimize these pressures the pressures would always be there but let's see how we can so i hope you enjoyed the session and uh, we'll be in touch inshallah assalamu alaikum